All right, so today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to rebuild a Tecumseh carburetor on a Toro uh, residential walk mower. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so here is a Toro walk mower. Um, it came in for won't start and hard to start and says they have to keep priming it to uh, keep it running. So automatically tells me um, it's more than likely a um, fuel issue. So we'll just start there and go from there. First thing you're going to want to do is remove these four bolts on top, which I already have done. Remove the oil dipstick, and then you can take this whole cover pretty much off and set it to the side like so. Put the dipstick back in. Next, you're going to want to remove the muffler. These two bolts here, um, and we'll remove the muffler. Let me do that now. Impact wrench. One. And two. Okay, both bolts are off like so. There's no gasket or anything on here, so there's that. I think there's supposed to be a gasket, but I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've worked on one of these. Next, you're gonna wanna uh, clean off this whole area, spray it with some brake cleaner, and then blow it off. Uh, I went ahead and unplugged the breather tube, and we're just gonna try to get this whole assembly off right here. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is get all the debris from uh, clear of the carburetor for the most part and uh, so none of this debris will fall into the carburetor when we take this whole assembly off. Um, so next you're going to want to, um, let me just pull this control cable off here. My compressor, I need to pick it on so it'll, I need to turn on my compressor so it'll pull that off. But um, next you're going to want to take off the uh, oh yeah i want to say the 11 millimeter for the mufflers and then 10 millimeter for the uh, intake manifold so we'll knock both of those off like so and then we'll set those to the side and then next you're going to want to um knock this thing off because it's it's sealed it's, it's on there just being held on by the gasket and then grab some pliers and some hemostats. Hemostats are very good for pinching off fuel lines without damaging them, and uh, they, just, they just always worked great for me. So, um, there you go. Falls right off, just give it a couple hits there. And these linkages here, just remember how you take them off. Me, I've got a lot of experience, but the, um, the, um, the governor, um, or the RPM adjusting, uh, one goes in the bottom loop there, and then this other one is hooked to where you push it forward and uh, this is the thr uh, governor or throttle side and just remember which hole it goes in as well um, so you can see there now I usually just take that one off there and now I try and take off this um, this uh, fuel line so usually a set of pliers will get to it but what I like to do is get that off as fast as possible and um, and uh, get the air, get the fuel tank um, dried out because this thing has been um, it could have water in it or condensation, and you want to get that out. So I'll usually just pull that out, take the fuel line off, which the fuel line can be kind of tricky, and um, take the fuel line off. And if you have to cut uh, the fuel line off or you know find another way to get it off, there's always. Uh, there's always some room for error to, uh, in cutting off the end. So make sure you pinch off the line there and then we'll just knock it off like that. And then I want to clean, like I said, I, wanna, I, want, I don't want any debris to fall in the carburetor. So as you can see on this side, you want to clean all this nasty stuff off before you take this thing apart. Um, but first I want to get my fuel tank off, which it just literally slides right on and take this off here and get this thing drying out. So we'll go ahead and get this drained out. 
Okay, so next you're going to want to get this uh, carburetor off, and you're going to need a 10 millimeter and a I usually uh, use an 11, 11 millimeter wrench to take the intake manifold off. So remember which side this uh, this gov uh, governor adjuster goes on, or the uh, RPM adjuster goes on, and because um, it's always going to go back on that same side. I got most of the gas out. Um, but there's still a little bit left in there, no worries. So we start by taking this off here. 10 millimeter and 11 millimeter wrench. And then take this off here to leave the gasket on there. And then you can use a screwdriver or a quarter inch um, socket to um, take this other one off here as well. So um, let me grab a quarter inch. Okay. And it, it stand, I use standard and metric. It doesn't have to be perfect with these smaller parts. They're not super torqued down or anything. So just keep that in mind. There's an O-ring here as well. So just put that to the side. And I'm going to go ahead and go and clean all this off here. And um, I'll um, actually I'll do that right now. I'm going to take this bowl off first. Here. So let this all drain out for the most part. So let's see what this looks like. So it's pretty gummed up and the bottom of the carburetor will tell you a lot about the shape that it's in. So as you can see it's got some pretty nasty gas in there and um, some debris as well. So just keep that keep that in mind. Um, when you look at it from the side view here, the float, how it sits on the bottom there. Um, you want to make sure that that's sitting perfect, perfectly level. If this is, if that, if that seat is swollen, it'll sit like this. And if it's too far down, it, the, the carburetor will not function correctly. And um, bend, bending this tab here is how you uh, fix that. So um, I'll show you guys how to do that here in a second. Let me just get this thing all cleaned up, and um, and uh, we'll get, we'll go ahead and uh, take it apart as well. Need a nose pliers, pull this piece out here, needle and pin come out, the seat stays in there. So the seat, you want to be very careful with the seat there. And um, what's what's uh, one of the more important things is this um, inner tube. Um, so the, the inner tube there, the main, or the uh, part of the, the pickup tube, I uh, forget the name of it, but um, the, uh, the main tube has two O-rings in there and you want to replace those every time you replace the uh, or rebuild the carburetor so i'm going to get a, a, a paper towel and then clean this, this this up here and we'll start removing parts okay so i usually just get some old gas to clean this off here and um, i'll just dip it in there and just kind of wire brush it out and just get all this nasty stuff off take this o-ring off as well this uh, float bowl o-ring usually is bad every time you remove it as you can see, we'll put that to the side as well. Just clean this thing off here. Clean off the seat as well, where the O-ring goes. And just clean it off as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you just want most of it cleaned out. Um, so you just want a nice looking car, basically, when you put it back together. It just helps um, with you know, the customer sees it and sees like, wow, that, that, that person actually did touch the motor. <laughs> it's just something I, I do. And, um, and then I start removing pieces out of it as I go as well. So I'll put that to the side there and I'll try to just stick your screwdriver down the throat of the carburetor and you can pop this, this uh, tube out, but you gotta be very careful not to break it because some of them get kind of brittle. And as you can see, just pop right out. So I'm going to get um, another tool here to finish removing it. Over the years you accumulate different tools for different things and usually like a pricking tool would work. You just need something with an elbow on it and you can uh, push that uh, tube back in. So this is just how I do it. This isn't the um, 
the only way to do it, but it's a little tricky to get that tube out. You just need like an L-shaped tool, and you can push that thing right out of there. Once I... There we go. Okay, here's the red tube. But now you have to fish out the other O-ring. The other O-ring is inside of here. You need to fish that out as well. And I have another tool for that. Okay, so here's the, to, uh, the tool that you need. Here's the part number. This is specifically for Tecumseh's. It's got a little bitty hook on the end here. And then this is how you fish out that other O-ring, which can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So just be patient when you start, when you try to pull it out. Try not to scratch the sidewalls up as much as you can. And after time, you will be able to pull it out. Let me see here. It's a little bit of finagling, but and there you go. There's the other O-ring. They're, they're kind of hard and brittle. As you can see, this doesn't even look like an O-ring anymore at this point. So if my camera will focus, you can tell it's not even an O-ring anymore. So we'll put this to the side as well. And it's literally falling apart. Okay, now that we've oh, almost got everything out, there's one more thing. There's a black cap on the side. You want to pry that thing off of there. Okay, however you got to get it off, usually a pricking tool, will, you can stab into it and then remove it, like so, there's the black cap. Take a flathead screwdriver, there's a brass, um, there's a brass fitting, take this jet out as well. Okay, so the next step, you're going to clean this carburetor, and to clean it, you can use an ultrasonic cleaner, is how I uh, will usually do it. Or you can uh, clean it with just using brake cleaner, which I've done many times for a long time. So what I usually do is I get my brake cleaner and I'll set it here. And you want to set all your parts on a clean surface, so a clean paper towel. I'll drop my screwdriver. Okay. And what I'll usually do is I'll take the uh, cleaner, and there's an, there's an orifice on the inside of the throat there. You want to. Put, I want to put my uh, canister in that orifice and just spray it clean for a, for a second or two. Clean off the, the whole outside of the carburetor as well. All this dirt and grime coming right off after I wire brushed it for the most part. And just keep, keep everything nice and clean. Just be careful with the seat from the from the, uh, the rubber seat where the needle goes, just be careful of getting brake cleaner on that because that will make it swell. But you can also change that out too. So um, clean out the inside here. Every orifice you can find, spray it out. And you'll see nasty stuff will come out of this thing. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and blow that off. So there's some, also some other jets on the inside here, on the inside of this, um, the inlet or the um, the engine side of the uh, intake, and there's some little dots in there. I don't know if you can see those in there, but those little dots, you want to run some brake cleaner through those as well. And I usually spray kind of hard through those because they're really small. Okay, now that this is cleaned, I'll just go ahead and. Clean it off here, for the, or dry it off for the most part, and I'll set it on my clean paper towel. Okay, next we're going to work on the main jet. This is the main jet. This is a pretty important jet. There's holes all in this thing, and you want to clean those out. And you can see there's some nasty stuff on the inside of that. You can see it right there on the inside of this thing. So we need to clean this thing up pretty good. And to do that, you can get these little uh, paint tip cleaners, I think that's what they're called. 
and just run them through all these orifices. And this is this carburetor is pretty clogged. It's pretty nasty. Where that O-ring was, that O-ring residue is right here on the lip of this thing, and you can see it pretty good. You can even like stick your wire brush in there. You want this little brass fitting to look like new once you're done. See, I just cleaned it off and you can see the specs right there. For me just touching it a couple times with a wire brush. So you just want to keep cleaning these little holes and make this thing nice and shiny. Like so. This gasket on the bottom, the bowl gasket, not a huge deal, but we may replace that. Let me see what all parts I have and then I'll replace it if I need to. It doesn't really need to be replaced, but we may replace it anyways. Okay, so everything is nice and clean. I'm going to put it on my clean towel as well. Uh, we're going to need those O-rings as well. So let me grab a card kit here. Here's the uh, rebuild kit. So we're gonna go ahead and replace pretty much everything on this thing. So um, so here's the uh, part number for the kit, the rebuild kit. On this jet you took off on the side as well, you wanna clean that thing out. It usually uses a pretty small um, tip. So. Clean that thing out there. Okay, nice and clean, put it on the paper towel. Okay, we're gonna clean this thing out here as well. This thing also has some tiny jet holes that you may need to clean out. There we go. Okay, nice and clean, perfect. This is all good, we'll clean the bowl out. And if you need to, you can use a wire brush to clean off the residue on the side here where the O-ring goes. Because you want that kind of clean. You can use a wire brush or steel wool. Works really good. Clean it out again. Blow it out. Set it to the side. Okay, same thing with the float as well. You want to be very careful with this float as it is very brittle. So I usually just blow them off unless they're gummed up. Okay, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to re uh, replace the seat as well. So this tool, same tool, you reach inside, push this uh, thing past the seat, and then pull the seat out. like so. Seat came right out. Okay, and I'm gonna blow that out as well. All right, so we're gonna replace the needle. So for the most part, also the, the O-ring comes in this kit. I just, I have it in another kit actually. So, um, here we go. Um, so, here's a full kit, and then we're going to uh, rebuild this carburetor with a kit, so here we go. Okay, so here we go. We're going to put this thing back together using the kit. This is a generic kit, so everything in here you're not going to use, so keep that in mind. Um, what's most important are these two little O-rings, the smallest O-rings in the kit. You're going to put them on over there, as, over the top of these, as, um, over the top of the emulsion tube. Okay, I'm gonna. I usually put just a splash of uh, brake cleaner on them, or, or gas works too. I don't know why, but this this brake cleaner container is really hard to press. Oh, you saw me struggling there, and we're just gonna slide it down. It helps kind of lubricate it to push it down, and just use something nice and soft tipped until it's protruding through the inside of the throat of the carburetor. Okay, now we're gonna put the seat in. The seat has two sides. It has a, a, a shiny or a flat side, 
with actually uh, something stamped on it and then it has a rib side. The rib side, you don't want to see. You want that to go in, so keep that in mind. So what I usually do is is um, spray a little bit of brake cleaner in there as well just to kind of lubricate it a little bit like that and then it'll dry up pretty fast and just get this thing started there and you can usually use like a drill bit or something to push it down in there I'll, um, I'm just going to use the tool that comes with this thing which is this here use the back end and just push it down in there like so. So the, the, the seat goes around this thing and pushes it right in. That's what the seat does. Okay, we'll go ahead and take this um, this um, ball nut gasket off. And we'll go ahead and slap the new one on there. There we go. Clean it off. Alrighty. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put the main, the uh, pilot jet back in. Okay. Boom. Okay, now the, this should have a pin doesn't have the little pin so for some reason so you gotta take this little pin thing off of the uh, needle okay throw that away put it back on the other needle like so okay it's hot in Texas so bear with me I'm sweating a little put the uh, needle on just like that okay carefully place it in this in the hole with the needle still attached, and then grab your float pin, slide it on through, like so. And as you can see, it's still sitting pretty flat, so no need to adjust that. All you would do is just bend that little tang on the on the uh, needle, um, and you can uh, level it. Now we'll slide the uh, bolt ga bowl gasket over, and it'll kind of like be tied on there to where it's, it's you have to literally pry it off. Totally normal. And now, where the bowl comes down like this, there's a slot in the in here, as you can see, that's deeper. And you want that slot to line up with where the bowl or the uh, float comes down. And then we'll put the main jet slash bowl nut back on there. And like I said, I, I usually use uh, standard end metric. And we will tighten this thing on there, like so. Okay, it doesn't have to be super tight. And um, you can put this cap back on there if you want. Some people do it. I do it just to make it look nicer. And that's pretty much all you're going to use in this kit. You didn't change any of the Welch plugs or anything like that. This other O-ring is for another another Tecumseh carburetor. And then I will start putting this thing uh, back together. So we'll start with the intake side. Slide this thing on there. Okay. And then we'll get the 10 mil. Let's flip this thing over here. Like so. Put our nut on there. Get it started for now. Same thing on the other side with the. Uh, this is how you adjust the RPMs by bending this apparatus here. Seven sixteen and a ten mil, or ten millimeter and eleven millimeter. Kind of tight. And we'll go down to the engine and start putting this thing back together. Okay, one thing I forgot to do, I just noticed. I forgot to change, uh, put this O-ring in where this intake goes. So, always remember to do that. I must have fell out, but I caught it. No big deal. We'll just throw it in there now. Like so. Quarter inch.
Okay, so we will put the throttle linkage back in, forward facing hole, like so, and then get our gas tank that has been drying. It's now nice and dry. And then we'll put it back into the tabs here. Okay, like that. And then we'll put the linkages back in. The hard side with no spring goes in the top hole, hooks towards you. This thing goes under and into the bottom hole. Make sure it's not twisted like how I just had it. Okay. Now, actually, uh, I, I said that backwards. Actually, we will connect our fuel line first. Okay. Get my pliers back. Nice and easy. Okay. Put the top in first. I'm trying to keep it step by step. I may make some mistakes just because I'm filming, but for the most part, this is exactly how it goes. Line up the bolt, the bolts, put the intake manifold back on. This would be easy for someone who wants to just see it from the whole process, no cuts, no nothing. So. this on here. So while I'm assembling this, I want to keep in mind that these carburetors are, are notorious for leaking. So I'm going to go ahead and put some gas in it. This, while I'm assembling this whole thing, I will uh, watch for leaks if there are any. And if there are, then we can just take it back apart, apart and inspect what happened. Okay, got that on there. Now, Breather hose is on, uh, throttle linkage is in, everything looks perfectly fine. We'll go ahead and put the exhaust bolts in. A little tricky. Let's get them started by hand first so I don't strip them out. And there you go. So take the dipstick out, put the cover over. Put the dipstick back in, always important. Okay, now we'll take a quarter inch drive and put the top board, screw it in. Okay, and then we'll replace the air filter as well. Every time you rebuild a carburetor, you want to replace the air filter, so keep that in mind. Um, and we will fire it right up. Okay, so one thing I wanted to point out is that when you prime this thing, I'm trying not to block the flashlight, but when you prime this thing, you want to see that fuel gush through that red tube. Like that, and you can see it's working perfectly fine. So three pumps and then we'll fire it up. Okay, so we're gonna fire this thing up. Keep priming it to keep the mower running. So um, 
that's all it takes to do a car rebuild and just to come see and to come see they're obsolete now. Uh, most shops won't even work on them. So this is a good DIY step by step, literally almost no cuts in between, no editing, no nothing, just how I do them. Um, I was slowed down and kind of crossed, you know, did things before the other uh, for, uh, uh, for two reasons. I haven't done them in a while. I'm just starting to do them again. And um, the other reason is because I'm filming. So uh, I try to do things in a, in a perfect process for the end user um, or the person watching this. It's easier for them to do. So um, thank you guys for watching. I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. Um, Please let's hit the like, hit the subscribe for more videos. I keep getting units in. I have two more right behind the camera that I that I had to get up and running because they needed them pretty fast, so I didn't have time to do any filming or anything. But I wanted to do this to come see because these this is probably one of the hardest carburetors to rebuild besides like a two-stroke um, on a lawnmower um, carburetor. So I uh, hope y'all learned something. Um, like I said, if y'all did, leave a like, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time.